All right, uh, two things. Number one is Dr. Cahill actually has a bad taste in music. He's a proud Irishman. And when we would operate together about 10, 15, uh, 10 years ago, we would always have to listen to Irish music in his OR, so, so just so you know. Uh, and number two, <laughs> and number two is um, kind of just talking about uh, a couple of different things. And one of the things I wanted to, this is a, as an aside, um, everybody's heard of PTSD. And this is kind of from a military background and things like that. But there's also a concept called PTSG with post-traumatic um, uh, syndrome growth, right? Like growth from whatever traumatic event it, uh, exists. And, uh, and I think I find more and more that my scoliosis patients, our scoliosis patients, you guys, are emblematic of that, where, where the, the effect of whatever happened, whatever event that you guys went through, and the growth you guys go through afterwards is amazing. And it's one of those things that makes you quite proud. Anyways, okay. So uh, I stole the picture. That's uh, Ms. Ellington. And uh, what do we want to know? We want to know what, what patients want to know what to expect. What's going to happen in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, what do I want to know about long term? I want to know what I'm supposed to tell them. And I also want to know how do I make the operation better? And how do I make the process better? And how do I do it in a way where we achieve the goals and make the patients happy? But the problem is that information can be a bit overwhelming, right? Especially with the internet and especially with what exists now. And so you, gotta, you have to kind of learn to interpret this. So like in the handouts and stuff like that you guys have, I put a lot of data and things like that. And I kind of decided last night I was going to remove a lot of that and just simplify it. So after the surgery, uh, will the curve come back? And like my hair, this is, by the way, just to help hair grow, it's not going to come back, right? <laughs> so the, the odds of the, the scoliosis coming back are relatively low. So that's not you're going to be your primary concern. Um, uh, can you develop curves above and below the level of the operation? Yes, you can, but th those are in specific situations, and that's where if you go to a, a really an experienced spine surgeon and an experienced spine team, we can minimize that risk. Will I lose flexibility, and will I notice? And this is where um, this is yes, there are, is an impact on flexibility, and we've we've seen that through the data. The question is is Will you notice? And this is where I'm going to give you a little bit what what is what we can call anecdotal information from what I understand, and what I feel from my patients. And when you get fused to the upper thoracic spine, um, most patients have no idea and they don't notice the difference. As you start going the lower into the lumbar spines, that's where you start to notice a difference in the flexibility. So the other thing is is it kind of depends on your activity level. So if you're a basketball player and you're fused to L3, it's not going to make all that much difference in terms of your mobility. It's not something you're going to notice. If you're a swimmer or a diver or a gymnast, and if you're fused even a little bit higher, you'll notice that there's things that, that feel different to you. And so, yes, it does make a, flex, a difference in flexibility objectively, but the question is, is it something that changes the way you do things? Will I have back pain? And this is the one that scares people a lot. And this is the one that we really have to kind of go into, uh, kind of look at the data specifically. It's because it's hard to think. So the way you have to look at scoliosis is it's, it's a chronic condition, right? Just like diabetes, just like asthma, just like a lot of the things. You live with scoliosis for the rest of your life. And you guys know that better than anybody. And so we can cure the problem, we can make it better, but it doesn't change the fact that you have scoliosis and the genetic makeup for that. So patients who are untreated and have scoliosis have a high incidence of back pain. And we know that from pretty much long-term uh, studies, um, specifically the uh, ones by, done by, by Dr. Weinstein in Iowa, which look at patients 40 and 50 years out. Okay. The, at the same time, if you have a posterior spinal fusion, 
you're, you do have a rate of back pain. Um, and in the 10 year uh, data um, out of the harm study group that I think is gonna be presented in the next year or in the next time, it, that incidence isn't zero, it's about 20%. So back pain is part of, of what patients with scoliosis have to understand that they may be exposed to. Now, are there ways to manage it? Are there ways to lessen that risk? Being active, maintaining a strong core, lifestyle is probably the best way to manage that. And again, that's where, where you know, from, what, from our standpoint, we try to do less, fuse fewer levels, interact with fewer levels. From your standpoint, maintaining an active lifestyle, being like Lindsay and, and doing the, the yoga and the Pilates and, and kind of taking care of yourself, just like you brush your teeth every day, just like you, you know, cut your hair and do all these things to maintain things. You gotta w worry about your back the same way. And it does require a, a bit of hygiene, back hygiene to maintain that. Will I need surgery in the future? Okay, the answer is I don't know, okay? But we do know that, um, that over 90% of patients at 10 years are doing quite well, okay? And we do know that the further you go out, the rate of surgery in those patients tends to go up. The question is, is, is uh, why is that? When does that happen? And we do know from the data that, that, that we have is a lot of that tends to happen early. And then there's probably another uh, time later in life with degenerative changes where you're at an increased risk as well. So the question is, is, is the surgery getting better and are the techniques better today than they were? Yes, because we find that the rates of complications and the, the long-term outcomes based on a meta-analysis which is a study of studies, um, that the outcomes are better now with pedicle screw instrumentation, the more modern instrumentation than they were previously. So we are making progress on that, but we still have things that we have to follow over the long term. One of the things that we're starting to realize, as Lindsay had pointed out for herself, was the neck pain, right? That's something that exists. That's something that's real. And, um, uh, and changes in the neck are really associated with the presence of scoliosis and then can be impacted, at least in the short term, of how we, uh, of, of, of the shape of the neck. And that probably does contribute somewhat to neck pain. But again, that's something that needs to be studied over a long period of time. So what don't we know? Does the improved techniques that we have, the better 3D correction that we have, does that improve your results over the long term? We know if you, if you malalign the spine, if you put the spine in a bad position, if you make it too straight with the old, old Harrington rods, that has a negative impact, right? Um, the question is, is now that we've gotten really good at doing three-dimensional corrections and seeing how patients, uh, and realigning the spine more to their negative position, does that improve outcome? And th that's something that's going to happen over a long period of time where we're gonna have to, to learn what that means uh, um, in 10, 15, 20 years. So the take home points. Over time, untreated curves worsen. Even in, 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 the, uh, in a number of studies, curves as small as 35 degrees can continue to progress throughout your life. Uh, patients do have a higher rate of back pain as compared to normal. They have, do have continued uh, concerns about cosmesis even later. Um, surgery does prevent progression of the deformity. Patients tend to be happy and want uh, with the result, results. However, 20% uh, of them at 10 years continue to have some level of back pain and 8% of them will require surgery within 10 years. However, that occurs most likely early. Um, however, improved correction and techniques have positively impacted results. And the, in the, we also know that the information over the long term continues to need to be studied because we don't know enough about what happens at 30 and 40 and 50 years out. And that's something that really this study group and this and you guys can really help with. Uh, and this is Dr. George trying to assemble a turkey fryer, which I found quite interesting and humorous. So I figured I'd end on that note.